Hi. Hi, everybody. Let's get started. You guys all ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the, I, I know that you have you all know the rules to Karen, um, Amanda, because she's actually written stuff for it. And um, Ben and Camila, I know you guys have read it. I'm going to still go through some stuff the first time it comes up. So if like a character has to roll a save, for example, I will just go through how that works just in case if there's any um, disagreements on that. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up as we go. Otherwise, um, you know, I'm not going to make, I'm never going to make you do something without knowing you have perfect information. If there's any question about um, what someone knew when they made a decision, then we'll just, you know, rewind and uh, we can do it again because we're here to have a good time, not fret over silly made up rules. Um, before we begin, is there any questions about the rules or what we're doing that we haven't covered? Okay. Not at this moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to be running a Highland Paranormal Society adventure. Also, um, the outfit run by uh, Nate Treme called Barrow of the Elf King. I've run it once before uh, in person, not online. So if anything seems off, that is because it's my first time running it in Foundry, but I think it'll be okay. Normally what I have people do is roll characters and then we kind of work out what their characters are about. Um, that helps build connection and makes it all, all the more interesting. So um, I'm gonna refer to your character, to you by your character's name as we play, um, just for a variety of reasons. So what I'll do is um, ask each, each of you to introduce yourselves. Go to your description tab. Um, you can take from that what you want. <laughs> if you want to change things, that's fine too. But um, I think it's interesting to focus on, for example, how you guys are all under 30. Uh, two of you are under 20, which is kind of interesting. Um, one reason I like the random name generator is sometimes you get last names and sometimes they're the same last name, so you can kind of make up like family relations and stuff. Um, one thing I would do is suggest you look at other characters' backgrounds as well. Um, there's two outlaws, for instance, so that kind of makes makes an interesting um, question for me about like, well, what does a cook hang out with two outlaws for? You know, so why don't we just start with uh, Kira, or is it how do you pronounce the name, Kyra or Kira? No, Kira. Kira is fine. Okay. Um, yeah. So t <laughs> tell us about Kira. Um, sure. Well, um, um, first person okay? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm Kira. I'm an outlaw. I am 17 years old. And uh, due to my uh, profession, I am rather athletic. Since I have to often run away. Um, I have luxurious hair that is really important to me and a chiseled face, which was just good luck and good genes. Um, I, um, my clothing does not matter so much, so it often appears frayed and I'm quite ambitious um, and I want to make a name for myself and, uh, but I'm respected. I am a good outlaw if you can say that. Um, good at what I do, though my morals could not be, uh, might not be uh, shared by all. Um, all right, and then uh, should I also say what I have with me, or that will come up later? Oh, you mean, uh, actually, yeah, let's take a look at your items. That's good. Uh, it looks, I mean, you do have outlaw-ish items in that you have um, armor, like a lot of armor and just a dagger <laughs> but a grappling hook that's yeah um and that's fake jewels i mean okay i think this is closer to like robber than outlaw but I, maybe there's not a difference um what what do you what do you make of that why do you have a grappling hook do you think um well because a dagger um if one were to throw a dagger and uh, they're not sure that they would get it back but 
a grappling hook that is, if I could, if, if you allow it, um, connected to rope, <laughs> that uh, might be a better ranged weapon. And in my adventures, I have found that um, sometimes you need items that double as other things and not just weapons. Oh, so you mean you could hit someone with the grappling hook? Yeah. All right. That would make sense. Could, yeah. Yeah. I would or, say, yeah. Know, yeah. I would say a, other things. It would make like, a, I would say it does D6 damage, you know, so slightly better than your hands. And maybe it's not really easy to uh, wield. Like, if you wanted to use it that way, you'd need both hands to do it. And um, maybe it gets stuck in people sometimes. So it's kind of single use, uh, not single use, but single use per combat if you wanted to come up with a quick rule for that grappling hook i'd be okay with that okay why do you have I'll fake about jewels it. though but i want you to think about why you have fake jewels and then we'll go on and we'll go to reese so hmm. all right so reese is an outlaw he's athletic but generally looks like he's kind of like he seems like he's pretty stinky as a person because yeah, he doesn't seem like someone who bathes regularly uh, he wears livery clothing and is greedy at discipline. So that what that makes me think is that he was maybe like some sort of low level guard or soldier type person who was taking bribes, and so he's that's why he's being blackmailed. Since he and Kira have a big age difference, like he's twenty six and she's seventeen, I think, but they're both outlaws. I could see him being kind of like a pseudo father figure type person if you're open to that um camilla just because it's like the idea and he it says he's a boar which makes me think he even though he's no longer a soldier or a guard or whatever he still kind of like acts like he is and is like very preponderous about how there's like maybe a right way to be an outlaw love it well i, I have a <laughs> question good. so he he's got <laughs> they both have gravelly speak speech um but uh kira has frayed clothing while uh, Reese has livery, which implies some kind of like fancy dress, right? Isn't it like... Yeah. yeah so, so does that mean he kind of carries himself as if he's better than his station? You know, he sees himself as better than his station despite being filthy and... Um, well, livery is normally more of a uniform for like... Yeah. A, oh, okay, okay. Or, 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 an armsman or Got a it. servant. I, yeah, no, officer. right, right. No, that that's kind of what I meant, though. Is like, you know, he <clears throat> he acts as if he isn't an outlaw, but maybe he was wearing that in the middle of some jewel heist. Because yeah. again, you guys have he also has fake jewels. It appears he did. Yeah, I saw that. So clearly, we we maybe robbed some sort of jewel caravan at some point, or we thought it was, but it was a fake jewel caravan. So it's very annoying huh. to both of us. <laughs> um, or we might not know they're fake. Yeah, that that that's true. Yes, or uh, what might also be interesting, I think, as a point of why you're here is maybe you, maybe someone clued you in, someone who worked for um, a fancy or wealthy patron uh, uh, house, like maybe a cook, for example, um, was your person on the inside, and. <laughs> perhaps perhaps part of why you're all together is that you did discover that they were fake um you know maybe nine had bad information and now you, you basically are like okay nine like you want to make this up to us um you have to help us on our next jaunt you know whatever the, whatever you guys are doing next uh, that's just an idea just an idea yeah cool i love it that's a good hook to bring us together and use the jewels uh -huh. Sounds good. Okay, so what I was thinking, oh, so go ahead and introduce yourself, Nine, and then I have an idea. All right, so I renamed to Nine because I thought with this character, uh, uh, fitting. Um, he, he lost his uh, pinky finger in a horrible broccoli-related accident, but he likes to tell people <laughs> it was a barroom brawl ah. involving knives and monkeys and got out of hand. But um, uh, Nine is a scrawny, pockmarked uh 18 year old uh, he's uh, has a rat like face and but he's clearly from some kind of wealth he speaks very precisely and liver wears the livery clothing and uh, but and he's has a vengeful mindset 
um, but he's, he's patient about it. Um, he's generally regarded as repulsive, which having a missing finger doesn't help. And he was abandoned. And he seems to have no health points <laughs> and prefer a lot of armor. Yeah, so the, the having... So just as a point of clarification, um, so hit protection is basically your ability to stay alive in a fight when you know it's a fight, right? So if, for instance, you fell into a pit trap without paying attention, that would just do damage directly to strength in this system as opposed to okay. like taking it from HP first. HP doesn't do anything for you if you're not aware of on some level that you're about to be hurt. Um what that does mean is that it makes sense that a cook would have no combat skill because you're a cook. Um, yeah. But where did you get the <laughs> morning star and uh, just, you know, serious plate or plate mail armor and a helm, which by the way, doesn't give you any extra armor. Plate mail is, is three and a helm is one and you can only have a max of three. So again, this is like, you, you Clearly, he doesn't know what he's doing. He must have stolen that from the house that he uh, works for or something. And so he's got these, like, you know, pretty badass uh, equipment, but doesn't really know what he's doing. Um, also, I'll point out, and this doesn't really matter, but um, the fact that he's got just really low stats. Not quite as low as uh, Reese, but he's got seven <laughs> decks um, and... Uh, 11 strength so he's not this guy is not tough his you know he's he's you guys are all relatively the same level of willfulness and charisma which is nice you know it makes sense but um <laughs> i think none of you are in any way going to survive um serious battle uh with the except well you might survive you might not get hit at first but any damage that's done to you i mean reese has five strength so good luck with that um <laughs> and <laughs> So what I would what I would suggest in terms of setting is that there Reese and Kira um, had some relationship with Nine. Um, Nine was kind of their man on the inside, and there was some sting set up where they stole a bunch of jewels. The jewels turned out to be fake. Um, maybe they're still valuable and you know somehow, but they're not valuable in and of themselves. And now you're asking Nine how you know basically you come and you you've approached nine and you've said hey these are fake jewels you you really screwed us on this uh how are you going to make it up to us and here's my suggested course of action nine because you're a cook and you always are around these wealthy people that you work for maybe they're an old noble house maybe they're a um a house that has said for years and for generations and generations how they are in fact descended from um noble elf blood for example, um, maybe you overheard someone mention that um, the great burial mound on the house's lands that not, not a lot of people know where it is, but you have some idea. Maybe you have heard that um, were someone to that the person who was buried there was some great ancestor and that they were likely buried with a lot of really uh, expensive treasure. And that's your kind of way of saying, Hey, we should hit this place that I'll make it up to you, you know, by telling you about this place. And then um, Reese and Kira, are, you know, you guys say, yeah, sure. Uh, you have to come with us though. That's fair. I was just wondering about one thing with the items, the fire oil, it says like one. So is that a single use item? Correct. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> um, here I'll put, I'm putting it there. I added this, the number of uses that's, that's on me. And actually it should do, no, I have to remember what it does. That is. I want to say D six, but that, I feel like it's more. Oh, good. I never decided. So I'm going to say it's D10 since it's, um, and it also probably does blast. So if you were to throw it, um, it would do D10 damage to anyone in the proximity because it has blast. So okay, fairly powerful. Um, okay. 
All right. Is there any other questions before we begin? Um, and I'll just open. Um, no, no question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm not going to... I'm gonna, we're not I'm not gonna turn on the next scene quite yet um, but we're just gonna get started so you guys agreed to nines uh, plan and reluctantly he comes along with you you travel through the lands of the house he works for um, there is a part of the noble lands called old, the old forest where the trees are extremely where the trees are thickly grown together. Um, it's really dark and surprisingly cold, um, largely because no sunlight is, is getting in there. There are no birds singing anywhere in the uh, vicinity. And something about the trees is different. They seem like their leaves are larger than you might have expected uh, trees of this type to, to, to sprout. Their canopies are so thick that... Um, the, the sunlight doesn't pierce even halfway down the trees. So it's pretty much too dark to even see anything. You have to actually light a torch in order to, to go through carefully. And the brambles are so thick that your one hand is holding a torch while the other one is cutting down the um, brambles in front of you. Uh, uh, who, who would be leading? I suppose nine would be leading you guys because he's the only one who knows where this is. Is that agreed? Yeah. Okay. That's fair. And the, the Morning Star is, is an okay, you know, substitute for a machete. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm assuming you're using your leg and smashing things with the Morning Star. Sure, that's fine. Um, eventually, you come out of the thick of the forest into a large, empty clearing. Um, empty of trees, I should say. In the center of the clearing is a massive burial mound. Um you can tell it's a burial mound because they litter kind of the older parts of this um, region, but also it's, it's, it, there are these large pillars, some of which that have collapsed sort of sprinkled about the mound. Um, it's covered in grass. So, you know, it, it looks like, you know, a person could theoretically climb up on it and walk around it pretty easily. It's not like it's covered in, in stone or anything. Um, it's probably just grass and dirt like most mounds. Um, it's so large that you can't really see around it. On the um, east side, there is what looks to be a, a, a the top of a very thick and wide tree sprouting out. Um, just to the north side, like, like you're, you're you're coming down on the north side of it. And um, just in front of you is a, a, a pile of three large, smooth stones. Um, one is really, really big. The other is just about half the size. And then there's a small one that, you know, it's the size of a dog or so next to it. So there's three large, smooth stones um, just kind of piled around. And what do you do? Well, I go um, forward a little since we got uh, to an area that is a little bit more clear. So I feel more, a little bit more comfortable. I was not comfortable in the in the thick of the forest. That's not the kind <laughs> of environment I like to have around me. Uh, I like to like see where I'm moving. And so as soon as we get into this clearing, I'm like, ah, finally, finally. Um, and I turn toward nine. And I say, so, nine. Um, how do we get in? Is this a place? This is a place. I told you I'd bring you here. I didn't told you. I didn't tell you anything about knowing how to get in. Uh, uh, let's cough a little. Look at trees. I was like, ah, okay. Uh, told you that this guy was a little useless. Um, all right. Should we find a way to get in? I'm eager to substitute this, and I touch my very tacky fake um necklace that i am wearing out of spite uh reese will like nod very sternly and just like 
with like a very like snooty look on his face and then he'll start um, um reese will start circling the because so there's like three stones blocking what would be the entrance probably so reese is gonna like walk around in the nearby area looking for um alternative entry to this barrow sort of describe it again this is just if the mound was this large thing here you guys are on the north side you guys can see all this yes Mm -hmm. yes and you can see yourselves don't worry about um you actually can click on yourselves and move around but it doesn't matter um the main thing is that there is a there are um three smooth stones you know i actually enabled this tooltip thing that you guys can use but i've completely forgot how to use it (laughs) so it doesn't matter um there are three smooth stones just where you are and then on the um east side there is a large tree uh did you go East or west initially? East. Yeah, okay. Um, there it is. If I only remembered how this worked. All right. So, on the, it, as you move east towards the tree, it, it becomes more and more uh, visible to you, obviously. It's still pretty dark. So, are you, are you holding a torch in one hand as you walk, or are you relying on the light from um, your party? I assume Reese lit a torch. Right, but I mean, yeah. oh, are you all going together? Sorry, I, I, I thought you were going separately. So, um, I'm sorry, not Reese. Sorry, uh, you are Reese. Nine is who I meant. <laughs> so Reese oh. lit a torch on their own. Excuse me. Um, uh, yeah. N- n- uh, once we got away from the and where anyone could see, Nine lit a torch to get through the woods and is kind of hang out. Right, but Reese is li- Reese is going to light his own torch and move. Sorry. Yeah. Got it. Um, Great. So uh, as you get to the east side of the mound, there is this tremendous oak tree. Um, It looks like the center of the tree has been ripped out, almost like another tree Mm. grew inside of it and then was taken out or something. Um, There is a hole in the tree and you can feel air, like warm air wafting through. it's stale, but uh, there is there. It is looks like an opening that at least one person could squeeze through. It'd be it'd be a little tri- tricky. You'd have to take your backpack off and pull it through after, but you could do it. All right, Reese is gonna find a big stick and just like poke around a little in that hole. <laughs> and if uh, nothing come, nothing immediately springs out. We'll go get the others. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> nothing immediately springs out. <laughs> okay. And yeah, this, this, seem, it, this seems like an excellent place for me to go. I love going in the hollows of weird old trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what I'm going to do for our purposes, I'm going to. Uh, so you, you went back and got the others, Reese? Yeah, I assume like if once I Reese poked around and nothing came out, Reese might have po- looked down the hole to see if there's like or if it's like a passageway or if it's like a hole straight down that you would need to climb just like to get an idea of what this egress is. Um, yeah. It, so it's, it definitely appears to be a tunnel. Um, you can only fit by you know one at a time and you'd have to pass your packs through. Okay. That's fine. Okay, I'm just going to do one thing on this other side because I made the same mistake again. All right, there we are. Cool. So in the meantime, while Reese goes toward uh, the tree, I just get closer to the stones, and I just they you you mentioned they're very polished, so I just want to touch them to see like how they feel. Um, they're extremely smooth, uh, definitely not natural. They are um, relatively flat on top, like they could be. Um, uh, Sanded, not sanded. What's the word they use? I don't know. Whatever it is, the flattened stone. <laughs> they they could be trimmed down a bit um, by some kind of tool someone used at some point, but they're not um, natural, certainly. All right. Um, I guess I'm pondering whether, like, I could step on top and look at things from uh, above, but I don't know if at this point trees uh, calls us to because they found a tunnel. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a great better. question. Um, Reese, did you go and tell your friends, or do you just go <laughs> explore on your own? Uh, I go and get them. Okay. At this point, or at least I like, hey, I, I go over and I say, hey, there's there seems to be some tunnel in, but it's pretty tight. 
Um, did you find anything over here? The, no, not yet. But tunnel sounds promising. Let's take a look. What if we crack those stones like eggs? Also an option. Perhaps it will take a little longer. So if the tunnel turns out to lead nowhere, that's a solid second, a solid plan B. Okay, we can try the tunnels. That's a good idea. And I'm just, again, I need to set one more thing. There we go. I think we're good. All right. And then... Uh, All right. So it's so you mentioned that we can get into the tunnel without, um, like, without the the backpacks, but we can still like sort sort of crawl through it. Uh, you have to hand each other your packs, but yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Um, give me one second. I just want to make this a little visible for you guys. There we go. And nine. Right, you can see way too much. Why can you see so much nine? <laughs> Give me one second. I'm just trying to make sure that when I put nine here, it doesn't. There we go. Okay. Um, and then I'm just gonna make this a little. All right. Cool. I'm just gonna avoid that. So, are you? Um, you are you? Are you stepping into the tunnel? What's the plan here? Yeah, I think we're all going down. All right. So you can click on your character, Reese, and move him forward with the uh, arrow keys, usually is the best way, but... It's over here, right? Oh, I did. you know what the problem is? I didn't activate the scene. My bad. Oh, <laughs> here we go. No. That makes more sense. Yeah. Where should we be? Where should I be? Where, it's where you are. It's good. Just go slowly. Don't worry about it. Just, I'm, I'm only going to put things there. I, I'll control it, so it'll be it'll be all right. Um, let me just make Great. sure. There, yeah, you're all there. So, um, Nine, can you control yourself, or I put you out too far? Oh, yeah. I... Cool. All right, you guys are good. There we go. All right. All right. So, Ooh. um, Reese has a torch lit, and we'll be, um, hitting the pack back to Nines, and then going in first right so um if you do it this way um how, what do you hold in your hands as you go through like a torch obviously but Tor torch and my shield i think okay okay um so yeah that that you have you see no problems with that you can enter in single file without any issue um the room opens up into a long rectangular uh, hallway. Well, I guess it's more than a hallway. It's more of a. Uh, uh, it, it's it looks like the kind of place that people would hang out and have like a party, but there's no chairs or anything, um, because you know this is a tomb. There is in the center of the room a um, well, like a, a water well of some kind. Um, on the east wall, on the like. Like southeast corner of the room, there's a tunnel leading out, heading south. You can you can walk in. Um, you'll be able to see it with your character if you walk in. I'm trying to walk in, but I think I'm stuck against something. Oh yeah, that's probably my bad. Here, let me just uh, assuming you guys want to, I'll bring you all in, and then it should just work. <laughs> um, all right, can everybody move in and out? I think I'm running into a door is what it is. Yeah, I got rid of that door. Here, you know what we'll do? I'm just going to put you all in that room. Sorry about that. It's all good. This is why I never action. use it. I never use the light stuff with... Um, I use roll 20, and I almost never use it. <laughs> oh, are we going that way? Oh, yeah. We were going the opposite direction. That's why. Yeah, because there was the arrow. an arrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that this is oh, it's annoying. I was annoyed at the arrow too. I got this. I actually made my own player-facing version of this map, and then Nate sent me his version, which was better, obviously, but it still had that arrow in it. Um, right, which is all right. So there's so there's a font in here. There is a well in the center of the room, and right. there is also on the southeast side a tunnel heading south. 
like a long tunnel. Right. Um, and just to, in the center of the room, um, uh, all, uh, on the south side, you can see what looks like a m- magnificent web being built by... Three large spiders. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do all the rolls publicly, just FYI. Um, Great. So there are three large spiders. By large, I mean like cat-sized spiders, um, and they're building a web across the tunnel that um, leads out from the um, uh, wall just directly south of you. All right. Have they noticed us? Um, they don't seem concerned with you at all. All right. Did you say they're blocking the tunnel? They're working on, they're not that there's a, there is a, um, tunnel just to the Southeast corner, like a long tunnel and they are not blocking that, but there is a kind of hole in the wall leading to another tunnel just directly South of you here. I will trigger it so you can see it. Um, also, is it worth um, going and crossbowing a small animal to give to the spiders to distract them? Uh, I mean, in my life, I've always, as in my young life as an outlaw, I've always found it more <laughs> suitable to my. Um, surviving uh, to go for the passages that do, are not guarded um, <laughs> uh, first. <laughs> so I, uh, I inch toward the, the passage that is not covered in webs and, uh, and spiders and sort of look into it. I don't have a torch lit, so I don't have a lot of a visual. Is it pretty dark in here? Uh, yeah, I mean, with the torch, you can see decently well. You can see throughout the room. Um, uh, the light should show you how far you can see and then the fog of war should show you where you have been um, there is a tunnel just south and in fact here I'll make this a little more interesting yeah how, do, how does the air smell uh, stale and okay um, m- and do we hear others, anything uh, other than the chittering of the spiders no um, I am going to put some down though so here we go alright uh, Reese uh, agrees with Kira that Let's avoid the spiders for now, if possible. All right. Um, so you're going to head south. And um, what, do you guys investigate any other part of the room? Do you look at the well? Like what? Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, we look at the well. Does, what does the color of the oh. water look like? Uh, Is there anything in the bottom? Well, real quick. Um, when you asked a moment ago, what does the air smell like? Were you referring to the room in general or to the tunnel? The southern tunnel oh, that's not guarded by spiders. So the, so the southern tunnel, it just smells bad, like stale. Um, but there is fresh air flowing out of the um, tunnel covered by webs. Okay. So that's pro- that might be an exit. That might be the alternate exit. There is um, in the well, as you were asking about the well, um, the well is not particularly deep. And uh, mm. do you like put your torch over it and take a look or... What do you do? Sure. Um, deep beneath the surface, there is something reflecting on the bottom. Um, it looks to be rectangular shaped and um, glints with a metallic sheen when you hover your torch above the water, above the. All right. Uh, we're gonna throw. I'm gonna throw one of my fake jewels in there to see if anything happens to it. So you. And I get close to you yeah. and. Uh... Um, while you do that, I was like, hmm, if there's something interesting down there, and I take my grappling hook out of the, <laughs> out of the um, backpack, I was like, we could probably recover it. Yeah, let's see first if this water is tainted. That's fair. The jewel plops into the water and immediately begins to bubble and dissolve. I, I think this might be some sort of acid, and I do not recommend that we reach into it or put anything in there. Yeah. Yeesh. I, do, I don't want to lose my hook to acid. That's, no, that's far more useful than that. And I put it away. 
Wonderful. Well, we could neutralize it. How so? Uh, yeah. I have some uh, cooking supplies. I could, you know, put some maybe milk and vinegar in there. Hmm. You carrying around old milk? Hey, is it, is it, is <laughs> yeah, it's fresh milk. We're, we're two minutes walk from the keep. <laughs> How do you expect I mean, you have, he, he, he does. He has rations. Whatever his rations are, he, he gets to decide. That's fine. So yeah, you're That's a cook. Funny. You probably brought yourself like the best of the best since you're a cook. Um, you know, you have access to all the food. So what what did you bring for rations? I'm thinking uh, some dried meat. Um, yeah, I'll say some uh, milk and scones. Oh. I'm going to try to pour pour my milk down and see if that neutralizes anything. I mean, yeah, that works for me. Um, so uh, you pour your milk in and nothing happens. The milk just kind of like descends down into the water. It doesn't boil. It doesn't bubble. Nothing that um, looks like what happened to the jewels. So I'm going to throw another fake jewel in there to see if it melts again. Uh, it does melt again. All right. I don't, that was a good try, Nines, but I, I do not think that uh, your little flagon of milk was sufficient to, unfortunately. I, I really want to know what's down there now, though. Um, I mean, you're welcome to put your hand in, but um, I don't, I, you know, occupational hazards and all. I don't think it's the best idea. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I I you know, you, you seem like a cook that has seen more than kitchens, but uh, <laughs> perhaps take our word on this, that if we have to come back and we have to get out through this well or we have to find what is here, we will uh, cross that bridge at that point. But for now, perhaps the, the path of least resistance uh, might be the smarter one until at least we find a treasure, right? It could be the treasure. <laughs> Well, let's rule out the other options first, since um, melt, uh, jewel, fake jewels melting treasure is uh, not my kind of favorite treasure. The, okay. the, yeah, so you guys decide not to pursue anything further with the well, is that right? For yeah. now. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so do you explore anything else in the room, or is that it? You guys move on? Reese will probably take a quick look around the well to see if there's any like symbols or anything on it, and if and if not, he'll head out down towards the southern passageway. Yeah. Um. So he he doesn't see any symbols. Um. The well itself looks completely normal, and the the liquid itself even looks like water, and doesn't even have like an acrid odor or anything. So, um, yeah, there's really nothing to learn further about the well. Hmm. I, I keep this in mind just in case, you know, I uh, say, well, uh, that's where we can throw the spiders if we <laughs> ever, you know, if they ever manifest any interest, uh, well, um, eating interest in us. So, yeah, yeah. And I like sort of back into the tunnel following Reese. Yeah. Reese is going to take out their crossbow and, and bear that with the torch as they're walking instead of the shield. Okay, so um, let's go ahead, Nine. Yep. Uh, Nine is going to reluctantly follow them with a forlorn glance at the well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but but Reese is going first, correct? Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Reese is going carefully, looking for strange things on the wall, ceiling, or floor as they go. So, um, yeah, the, the floors are rough hewn rock uh you know like you'd find in a, a any other barrow i'm guessing as an outlaw reese has probably seen uh more than one barrow in the past um as he gets closer and closer to the end of the hallway he can make out something um mounted on the far wall on the south wall in the room that the hallway opens up into um right. it looks like it's it's flickering almost like flames like he can't quite make out what it is but as he's getting closer um, i assume he stops in the hallway um 
Yes. As he's getting closer. He's, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, he's going to keep be keeping a special eye out for anything that like rugs, anything that might be like a pressure plate. Right. Just yeah, 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 sure. Um, so he doesn't see anything like that or feel anything or notice anything like that. And in fact, um, the closer he gets to the room, the more he um, is convinced that all he's seeing is some kind of tapestry on the southern mm. wall. Um, in fact, uh, he's close enough now that um, you could probably step in a little bit to expand your view. Um, that what he sees is a beautiful tapestry of elves dancing in a circle, holding hands, birds flying overhead, the trees around them are swaying in the wind, and um, in the background, there's this incredible armored warrior fighting a uh, blood red dragon. You know, it's very cool looking. The thing that's quite unusual about it, though, is that. Um, it's sort of in motion on a loop. Like it looks like the knight is moving and hitting the dragon and then resetting and then moving and hitting the dragon. And the elves are dancing in a circle, holding hands. Um, they move to the right, they move to the left and so on. The birds sort of sh shift up forward and backward in the air. Um, so yeah, it's like a, this is probably, you've never seen anything like this before. Um, you are certain it would be worth a lot of money. It takes up, you know, most of the south wall, though, and um, is hung about uh, three feet off the ground until the ceiling, which is about 10 feet high. So it's a, it's a pretty massive uh, tapestry. But it, you, you can tell it's worth a lot of money if you were able to cart it out of here. Now, that is something that should be on our shopping list, so to speak. Yeah, um, as I entered the room... Uh, well, first I turn to see if Nine is following us. Um, <laughs> I don't see it, but I assume he will eventually join us. Oh, he is. Is, this um, not, is he not? I thought I marked him. He's there. Yeah, no, he's coming. No, oh, he's okay. Coming. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then I enter and I marvel. And I was like, wow, this is gorgeous and might be worth a lot. But how do we carry it? That's really big. It, it looks like it would take it. You could theoretically, if you could get it off the wall, you could roll it up, and it, uh, the two of you would have to carry it uh, pretty carefully. So you'd have to kind of put it on the shoulders of the person in front and the shoulders of the person in back, um, and you wouldn't be able to use your hands while you were doing it. So uh, the way that this would work mechanically is your hip protection would actually go down to zero, uh, meaning that you basically couldn't do in a fight. You just yourself. take yeah, you would just take damage um your arm your armor might protect you depending on the situation but it would leave you vulnerable is my point sure um so i look at reese i said perhaps on the way out if nothing else is more portable reese nods and he goes to listen at the kit the passageway to the to the west and smell just do general yeah 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 i'll, I'll, hear, I'll yeah. continue describing the smell if it's good um <laughs> so <clears throat> sorry i was a uh, had a, <laughs> a long yawn there um there the, the 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 passageway to the west is quite short you can see it immediately opens up into another room after only a few paces um you as you lean into it though to get a a whiff you hear something like the sound of um something solid striking a table and then bouncing like um you know you're an outlaw you probably sat around a lot of campfires killing time to you it is mm -hmm. it is discernible as dice being thrown onto a table um, you hear the occasional shuffle of what sounds like feet or maybe um, pieces of wood. It's again, it's, it's hard to make out. Um, but yeah, it sounds like there's one or more uh, creatures throwing something against a table and picking it up again. It's it really sounds like dice. So Reese is gonna like put a hand up to be like shh, and then like do a bunch of hand gestures but like old military hand gestures mm -hmm. that um maybe kira understands but nines probably definitely doesn't 
So and then I remember, just, <laughs> I just what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, nothing happens when nine loudly says what. Um, the dice sound continues, and you hear the occasional shuffle still, but um, it, uh, your your I would say your trained ears can detect at least two, if not three, pairs of feet shuffling around, but. Um, no voices yet. There's really no audible voices. So what do we think the likelihood that these are friendlies? I am inclined to think not. Well, um, everybody becomes friendly if we sneak up on them and uh, render them unconscious. So <laughs> let's try that. Looking at nine with a very like scowling look, like, please. Stop talking. Right. So Reese is ready with bow and we'll crossbow and we'll follow, but is like maybe you know is like a ranged guy. We'll but we'll follow if uh, if Kira or Nine are going to sneak into the passage. So to just get a better uh, yeah. look on what's is, going is on. Is your goal to avoid being detected to sneak yes. in? Okay. Um. So uh, the question is, do you believe that if he were to be noticed, there would be some threat and my suggestion is that based on what you've seen already you probably assume there is some kind of threat uh it might be possibly dangerous so what i would suggest is you make a dexterity to save um Mm -hmm. perhaps the person who's best at sneaking could do that but you make a dexterity save uh, just to see whether or not you are loud enough to be noticed I mean, if dexterity is what influences uh, sneaking, then uh, I think Kira is going to try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Kira is the best okay, at it okay. of the three of us. Yeah. Just, to, just, I just want to make that point. I guess clear. Um, sure. So, uh, to do that, you can. There's a lot of ways. The easiest way is to click on your uh, character, Next. and mm-hmm. then um, uh, click on the decks, like hover over decks, and click. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a fail because you rolled above <laughs> your score, yep. um, which is twelve. It's a little high. Um, so can you sneak yourself forward a little bit? Can you uh, walk forward? Yeah. Just into the area? Let me right. let me cool. sneak myself into being discovered. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, there. Let's move forward a little bit. So. Um, you... So I I say hey I, <laughs> uh, I think I can do this. And so I, I, sh- I shush everybody with my finger in front of my mouth. Then I go in and uh, wonderfully hit my head on like, <laughs> some, some form yeah. of uh, rock yeah. that, that was sticking out. Yeah, and or maybe you like I, you like sneeze from the dust or something, you know, something like that. Or that, yeah. Um, for, fortunately for you, um, all that happened as you stepped uh, a little too close to the room and made too much noise is that the three skeletons sitting around a small table rolling dice um, just glance at you briefly and then lose all interest and look back at their game. Um, I'll Let me describe uh, these to you. They are made up of um, varying and inconsistent armor. So like one will have a helmet, the other has a sh- like a... a leather armor and then the other is wearing no no armor at all some of them are missing limbs and those limbs can be seen on the table in a pile um the uh focus of the skeleton seems to be on whatever game they're playing and as you watch uh, the leftmost skeleton um kind of shakes his head once picks up the dice which also appear to be made of bone and throws them at the table um, waiting to see what the results will be. Okay. Um, I freeze uh, after I make uh, a lot of noise. Um, I look behind me, panicked. But then I look ahead with my, you know, I take out my dagger and like sort of prepare for to be attacked. But then keep looking and I see that they go back to their game. So, you do, um, you do, yeah. They just seem to ignore you. You can also yeah. make out in the same room um, uh, uh, two exits. One uh, just to the north, like uh, there's a 
like directly north of where you step in. Um, it's mm -hmm. a long, long hallway. And then there is another exit on the opposite side of the room on the, the northwest side as opposed to the northeast side. Um, that's identical, but you can't actually like see into it. And then um, finally, there is a tunnel, like a, just a, a normal looking tunnel uh, heading to the west. So there's three exits here. Okay, um, I turn back and almost um, whispering, I say, I don't think they're paying attention to us, so we could just probably sneak by, and I make a couple of steps heading toward north, in case, you know, we can just quickly run into that if they seem to pay attention to us. And it looks like, Reese, uh, you followed in, you stepped in behind yeah. yeah, mostly out of protective Got reasons. It. Okay, yeah. So th again, they seem to be ignoring you. Um, uh, do you just walk past them and go out through one of the exits? Is that the goal? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and you're going through the the most north, the northernmost one, not the northwest or the west exit. Well, I just I just wanted to walk into the room, sort of walk by them and see what they did. If they don't react, then I sort of. Without talking, I sort of gesture toward the exits and uh, and sort of raise my hand, like, which one should we take? Is there a hmm. consensus there? I think uh, Reese would want to go north because, like, yeah, they're not being hostile, but it might be because they're not guarding that one. True. Okay. And if nine, right. you're, you're following? Yep. All right. So, um, Kira, proceed. Sure. So we go into the north hallway, and uh, how does it... You can see like... another hallway branching off to the east uh, from this hallway. There is um, <laughs> a lot more webbing here, it appears. Mm. Um, the hallway ends uh, to the north and then turns to the west, but you can't make out what's what's over there from where you are, not without entering that hallway anyways. That's probably what the spiders were building towards. That's probably their lair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, it, if the webbing is very um, present to the east, I would avoid that for right now and keep going. So you don't, you're, yeah, so you're avoiding the, you're not going to go east, yes? Okay. Yeah, we're going north. Cool. And then yep. west. Yeah, 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 great. So, um, the tunnel turns to the west, and um, you before you enter the into the room, I just want to make clear what you see in here. There is a lot of noise coming from this room. It sounds like broken pottery or something is being sh moved around on the ground, and you hear what sounds like a, a kind of uh, sucking or chomping sound. Um, you don't immediately see anything at eye level, but on the ground amongst all these broken urns and, and pottery, um, there appear to be, and actually I'm gonna do another little, little roll here for us. <laughs> um, There are four um, dog-sized worms feasting on the contents of these urns. So what looks like, you know, elf remains, human remains, something like that. Um, they appear to be feasting on them, um, and thus far have not have yet to notice you. But you also haven't stepped in the room yet. Yeah. <clears throat> Can we check out the other room? <laughs> Reese, Reese nods. <laughs> yeah. I, I just like. Oh, I didn't mean back, I didn't mean track. the spider room. I meant south. No. Go back to the south room. room. I mean, if Reese is going to go into the spider room. No, no, nine can go first. Or nine, rather. Uh, I'm going to throw a little piece of my, like, jerky to the spider. 
I don't think there's spiders yet. Oh no, they're no, no these are worms. Be... These are worms. Oh, oh, oh we're not that, in that uh, sorry, sorry, anymore. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I didn't realize he had actually gone. Um yeah. I was my mic just fell off my head. So I was adjusting it. Um yeah, so before you do anything, <laughs> um, so first off, as you step into the room, there's so much yeah. um uh webbing around you that you actually get um got got caught in it. Um and I I mentioned the webbing earlier, but I guess I could have brought it up again. Um, if you're okay with it, I would ask you to make a strength save to see if you can even break free from the webbing that you just walked into. Uh, sure. Oh, great. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah. No, wow, well, crit success. Yeah. So you, um, you I, either, I guess you're tougher than you look, or maybe your armor makes you really tough, but you easily break through the webbing and kick it off your body, you know, dramatically. Um, as you stumble into the room... Um, you quickly make out um, four large web sacks hanging from the ceiling. And um, uh, before you can get a chance to really check them out, um, you see that one of them is actually moving, by the way. Um, but before you can get a chance to, to check them out, you see in the center of the room a massive spider um, the size of a cow. It looks up at you and at first doesn't react um, like it doesn't like hiss or move or anything, but all of you nearby feel a sudden presence in your brains, um, almost like a, a tickling and you begin to hear a voice, but first it's concentrated um, directly to you Reese, since you were the first to step in, by the way, not well, nine was nine ours, was so. nine was sorry. I keep forgetting who's who. <laughs> this is my bad. Um, so uh, yeah, n nine. You hear it first. Um, it's a deep voice, uh, matronly. Um, hello, welcome to Sarmota, Mosarmotra's domain. Are you here to receive a blessing, or are you just dinner? That's what she says to you. I'm curious about this blessing. Ah, ah I knew you were a wise one. <laughs> Let me bite you, and I'll pass my gift to you, and you can become one of my servants. Does it have to be right now? I'm afraid you don't have a choice, dear. And she begins to slowly kind of make her way towards you, very casually, very... Um... She doesn't seem to be threatened by you. I'm going to light my fire oil and check it at her. Oh, Okay. Okay, so so as you begin reaching for your fire oil, she continues talking in her mind, and she says, "Be not afraid. My gift comes with many blessings, including spider-like abilities. All I ask is that once per month, you bring me something to die that I can feast upon, and the gift will be renewed." So she she does begin to kind of explain more as she gets closer. Um, again, she doesn't stop moving. So do, you're welcome to continue chucking it at her. I just wanted to um, get that point across first. So, so, so from our appearance, uh, a giant spider is just walking towards nines, right? Yeah, that's correct. So Reese is, go Reese is going to shoot at the spider after whatever nines does with the fire. I'm going to say, yeah, like, hold, hold on, hold on, guys. Like, this may be interesting. So uh, you attack the giant spider that's approaching, right? Was that? Uh, I, I, are you stop? No, I, I, I said, like, hold off, hold off. I'm curious where this is going to go. I'm going to, I think, pass my fire oil uh, to uh... Kira. I can hold it in the back and just pass it over. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so she looks like she's about to approach you. Are you? Do you like? Are you accepting of it, or are you going to continue asking? Yeah, questions? I'm going to accept her <laughs> offer. <laughs> okay. See what happens. Um, she leaps on top of you. So again, this is what you guys see. She leaps on top of you and she proceeds to bite you in an open spot. Now you have a lot of armor on. Um, so unless you're letting her do that, it might be a little tricky for her. So uh, I assume... Yeah, I guess I'm going to like like pull off a, a gauntlet. Okay, yeah. So she bites you in the arm and you feel this like acid enter your veins. Um, memories of... Um, victims of hers being spun in, into web and hoisted above enter your brain so you get an idea of kind of like 
what she eats um and it's it's various forest creatures it's people um you even get a sense that she um will eat her own kind she needs to um you also feel a sudden vitality and you can determine that the light around you changes dramatically and you can see a lot better like i should say the darkness around you um so actually let me uh let me do that i'm gonna say increasing your there you go now see a lot better although i mean you're in a room but (laughs) um and you you also get the feeling that you are able to um climb walls and ceilings if you want to like you have this you feel these spider-man like qualities appear in your fingers um but deep within the recesses of your mind you also feel a gnawing like a a feeling that you're certain will grow and you also have the deep impression that if you don't bring to sargmotra a victim within a certain time frame you'll go like this feeling will overcome you like you know that to be true um and then she backs off of you and she appears at your allies and uh, now reese since you're closest um, you hear it as well in your mind, and uh, Kira, you as well. The same offer is made. Well, my livery will no longer fit if I uh, grow spider legs, and so <laughs> I must uh, politely decline, uh, <laughs> though I appreciate the offer. <laughs> um, I do the same, and I start walking back uh, quickly. <laughs> well, so she looks if a spider can look uh, expectedly over at you Reese and uh, you hear her in your mind say, I think your first offering just walked away. Sort of asking you to, you know, try to get your friends back. You, oh, ni- oh, nine, nine, nine. nine. I gotta, you know, I'm going to switch the order. Uh, I, I keep uh, looking, I keep thinking you're the other two. It's very silly. Uh, um, how do you, how do you feel about worms that are full of uh, orc and elf? Uh, that's, uh, you know what, that's a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll a, <laughs> die of it. Yeah. So that was, that was actually private. I got a two, but I should have changed it. Um, uh, so when you roll a die of fate, the higher the roll, the better it is for the players. Um, she, uh, almost laughs if what you can if if a spider could laugh she she appears to almost laugh um and she says i don't eat that which only eats decayed flesh bring me something better and then she begins to um do something with her legs onto the ground like almost like um, making a, a rhythm on the ground and as she's doing that you can see from the northeast tunnel um a number of spiders begin to enter And I say, this. Let me bring you an offering tomorrow. Uh, but these two are not your offering. So it, okay. So in this case, um, you are the one who is most at risk here. So yeah. if you are trying to convince her of this, what you'll need to do is um, make a will save. If she was more at risk, I would make her do it. But um, okay. So roll, I, roll a will save. Can I also throw the my jerky at the spiders. Well, do the will save first. I, okay. Why do you keep thinking things want your jerky? <laughs> it might. Ooh. Um, she pushes past you and begins to clamber on over to the hallway where your where your friends are. Um, uh, but before she does, her spider minions get there first since they're much faster. Um, they do cross by you. Do you go? Do do you do you try to stop them like with your jerky or what, what do you do? Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to back out and tell them to tell uh, Kira to throw the fire vine oil in there. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, Kira and um, Reese, what? Yeah, let's. I'm assuming you guys got back into the hallway. Um, what, 
what is your oh yeah preparations here? Are you you're you're agreeing to throw the fire oil at? Yeah, okay. like uh, yeah. Reese has a torch that is on, and uh, Nine just said to use whatever he passed me on earlier. I light it on fire and I throw right. it into the room. Okay, yeah, we I forgot to to move that into your sheet, but um, that would have been more helpful. Um, so just do a you know I'll just I'll just roll it from here. Um, sure. I recommend we flee down towards the yeah. skeletons. Yep. yep. Um, so after we do this they, yeah so so the three of you flee the three of you get out of the hallway while um Kira throws the fire can you can you roll uh just can you type can you do forward slash roll space one uh actually do uh yeah do one d10 just do one do one d10 one d10 yeah because okay, i'm assuming that it's only going to hit um like one spider at a time since they're fairly large all right eight no. what that that's not bad that's pretty good. Okay. Oh, that's damage, right? Yeah. yeah it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. That's not bad. Um, okay, so that this creature has to do a strength save as a result. So the fire oil lands on the ground around it and explodes in flames. Um, it drizzles all over the, one of the spiders. Two of its legs burn off and begin to like melt, but it continues coming at you um the flames spread somewhat and begin to catch the webs on fire all around it and the tunnel becomes uh blocked in flame but one of the spiders does get through and it uh, so normally when you enter combat um both sides make or the the players make deck saves and mm -hmm. um whoever fails goes after the monsters but because this was kind of happening out of combat almost um uh, I kind of assumed you'd get the first blow. So what I'd like you to do is the other two, Amanda, oops, I should say, <laughs> um, nine and uh, Reese, Reese and nine. Can you guys both make deck saves to see if you can go before the spider yeah. gets to you? Totally. Nope. All right. So the first spider gets to you nine and. Uh, yeah, it does 1d6. Great, okay. Um, so it does six damage, and if you recall, you only had one hit protection, um, which means two things. Um, for one, oh, I didn't, I should have targeted you. That would have been nice, but whatever. Um, for one, your hit protection goes down to zero. The other is you have to now, um, and your strength, I should say, also goes down by four, so... Um, I am not a mathematographer, but um, now I want you to make a deck save with your or a strength save with your new strength uh, score, which is seven. Oh goodness! Um, the oh, goodness. the boiling, you know, fl flame ridden spider leaps on top of you and sinks its uh, incisors into your neck, and um, you begin. Oh, I forgot to remove your your armor from that. Excuse me. That should that should have been much better. Um, yeah, I should have attached this. This is, of course, you can see I'm ill-experienced here. You actually have three armor. So what, what actually would have happened... Hold on, now we got to reset this. Uh, yeah. Do my spider powers help me at all? No, but but we have to redo this. We didn't do your armor. My bad. Here, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Um, so actually, it was six damage. Right, okay, this is actually not as bad. Um, so your armor takes away three, which means there's only three left. And then your hit protection absorbs one of them, meaning that you only have you now have zero hit protection, and then there's um, only two left. So you're actually at nine. So go ahead and roll again, and this time, all right, <laughs> um, success. So sorry about that. Uh, next time I'll remember to actually target you when I when I <laughs> when I do it. You can see it's been a long time since I've done this. So. Um, yeah, so you actually survived that. So it leaps on top of you, um, but you, um, how, what do you try to do to avoid it hurting you? I mean, it does hurt you, but like, how would you say you survived this encounter? Oh well, I'd say it like uh, it's on fire, so it burns me a little and scrapes me through some mm -hmm. joints in the armor. But I'm still wearing full plate, right. so that right. really helps versus 
spiders or anything. So without yeah, I would say I would say it like it gave you some pretty um, large gashes where it was able to get to you, but otherwise you're able to throw it off of you and continue running on down the hall. Um, the fire behind it has spread now to the point where uh, the other spiders can't get through. But so you can all run away or you can all react. Um, I do recall, uh, Reese, you failed your role, so you you can go next if you like. Yeah, I can go. In, uh, meaning go down no, or, or go attack or whatever. In terms of whatever you want to do. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Reese is going to shoot him with the crossbow, so I'll just roll. Crossbow. Yeah, and Reese, Reese was. Oh, whoopsie. Um, so you're initially Reese was standing all the way in the hallway, anyways. So that makes that makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, an eight. That splits the head of the spider open, and it collapses on the ground in the hallway. And um, you know, it's you guys can run away now if you want. <laughs> I mean, you're out of yeah. combat because nothing else can be. Oh yeah, blank. we are running. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so, so do you run to down. the north or the south? The south, because the worms are to the north. That's, that's to the skeleton true. room. That's true. Yeah. And, and Reese is like, let's go. Let's go this way. So there the is worms a climb walls. yeah. So there is a hallway to the to the west. Um, yeah. Actually, did I? Oh, I guess I must have. Let me make... That's what I was thinking. I was gonna say peek down these two, see if this, try to be gingerly about it because the skeletons. Hopefully, they don't get provoked. Can, yep. can worms climb and skeletons like climb on a ceiling? Uh, they the worms, to your knowledge. Uh, no, they're just sitting on the ground, but you're not actually sure. I mean, it's... It, you don't know... Can anything. I now climb on the Oh, ceiling? yeah, you definitely can. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go it's this good way. To know. But... There we go. One second, I'm just fixing something. There we are. Um, okay. There's a... There's a... At the end of the hallway, it opens... Up, there's a there's a closed wooden door. Um, it appears... To the Which hallway? To the, the north to the or west. to the, 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 the west? west? To the west. Okay, so the west has a door. Do we see anything to the north? Um, there is another. It's. It looks like it's a tunnel that goes um, into the same room that uh, uh, the worm room. In. Okay, correct. Um, you All can right. see though from this side that there is a door on the west side of the room. Okay. Um, I I think we should go check. We should listen at this door and see if we hear anything, because we know there's worms up there and they don't seem nice like weird corpse worms so so i mean they they didn't like they, they didn't even notice us so we, we don't know if they would even like pay attention to us but surely they have a taste for at least dead flesh well i have a question they look cute yeah they eat humans so i have a question <laughs> Maybe. um so you, you guys came rushing out of that hallway making a bunch of noise and then you rushed into this room and you went to the west side correct yeah yeah okay. yeah uh, so so as you do um the guards look up at you again uh, one of them puts its puts its finger on its uh, skinless lips and, and says, "Shh," as if you were as if you were interrupting them. Um, yeah, as as I pass through, I'm like, "Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry." Um, you hear another one make a comment like, "Oh God, can they get out of here already?" Could just, and then the other one says, "Just focus on the game. It's fine." Um, so they they seem preoccupied but annoyed. Um, can we? Okay. What do you, I want to? Can I just ask the group? Can we? Do you think it's possible to ask them a question, and would they kill us or answer? I mean, you're making deals with spiders, so if you want to talk to the skeletons, no one's going to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> you can always climb on the walls. We cannot. So uh, that's true. We're, we're okay. going ahead. You you can stay back and ask. Okay. No, I, I'm fine if you want to talk to the skeletons, but it seems like they don't want to talk to us. Well. But thinking, you should ask ask them something. Right. I want to ask the the skeletons. We will get out of here as soon as we can if you can tell us where the treasure is. Uh, the skeleton closest to you um, on the north side of the table um, looks up looks looks back at you, and even though it's a skeleton, you get the impression it's annoyed. Um, and uh, it says, "Okay." Time for you to go, and it points to the east back the way you came through the tunnel. It like kind of gestures in the general direction of the room with the giant portrait the, on the east side of the room, the south tunnel, southeast side of the room. I say, okay, I'm going to go that way <laughs> and obey them. 
And then it looks back down at its table once you move off. Uh, um, recent cure, bit... recent cure. Yeah. Do you do you want to keep going? Um, Into this I, room I... without nine. Reese, I miss the days when it was the two of us and we made sense. <laughs> that guy. Uh, yeah, I, he's just very unpredictable. Indeed. Um, it could be, however, that the skeletons in their quest to be, you know, left alone actually pointed us to the treasure. Maybe it's worth taking a look at the tapestry. Perhaps there's something underneath that we haven't looked at. It was the most beautiful thing we've seen coming in. So, so as you two are it talking is. and having this whole conversation, yes. one of the other skeletons looks over and says, it's getting late. Can you please just leave? You're going to wake the spiders. All right, so I'm going to take a quick listen at the door and then I'll listen to the skeletons. Uh, so you put your ear on the door and you hear on the other side what sounds like shuffling followed by the occasional sneeze. I'm going to open the door. <laughs> um So as you walk into, the, you're, you're, are you walking in or are you just opening it? I'm going to, I mean, I'll look around, but if there's nothing immediately yeah. threatening, yeah, yeah, Reese fine. is going to walk in just to avoid the skeletons sure. and spoiling um, them. So the room is uh, full of what looks like old, broken, and dilapidated barrels. Um, in one of the barrels, you see two legs sticking out. It is, um, there we go. Uh, it looks like the, the the legs look almost child sized, and um, ew. But but they're <laughs> but they're moving around like it's stuck in there, and um, it, the barrel is shifting back and forth, and and the sneezing you heard seems to be coming from that barrel. Reese is gonna say, "Are you stuck?" Um, as your voice fills the air, the legs stiffen as if surprised, and then a um, small childlike voice says. Yes, help, please help. I'll give you anything. Help me, help me. Reese right. is going to be cautious it. and knock it and like gently lower the barrel over. Um, yeah, I, I come in and help you when I hear this voice. Uh, yeah. So from inside of the barrel, you pull out a small female presenting goblin with a fake mustache made of leaves a bowl a wooden bowl as <laughs> her helmet and a obvious toy sword made with two sticks tied together she sniffs and then sneezes once more thanks i didn't think i could ever get out of there and i hear there's terrible spiders here too they are quite terrible she sneezes again um i, I did my family send you uh, no, but it doesn't mean that we can't be helpful. Well, if you can help, my family will be plenty happy. I just want to go home. Well, you can follow us. We can find a way out. How's that? Well, I, I think, I think I came that way and she points uh, to the north. And then let's, All right. let's, we, let's pause we happen to be going second. that way, perhaps also. Ah, Sorry. Okay, no, no, that's okay. I was just going to say, I, I, be, I, I, I'm going to ask Nine what he has been doing this whole time momentarily, and he'll get a couple actions. But sorry, so you were saying that's where you're going as well. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, let's go quick. I, I think I might be allergic to this place. And then she sneezes again dramatically. Wow. Well, uh, go ahead. Now we're going to do Nine, I think. Yeah, before it proceeds, that's why I'm curious what Nine has been doing. Have you been like climbing the ceilings here or something? Yeah, he tested out his like climbing abilities. So, he, but he also went back to the well and he's he's climbed down the well, and he's gonna stick various cooking implements down the well to see if they melt in the ice. Well, though, yeah, you don't need to climb down the well because the water was um, high enough that uh, climbing in would be. Oh, okay. Yeah, but but um, but so yeah, uh, let's. I, you can so two things. Um, don't forget that when you come back over here, the tunnel there is attached to the room um, with all the spiders. So there is, they haven't, when you approach, um, let's let's see if they're actually still there. I'm going to do a die of fate for you to see if they're, if they're investigating anything. 
Okay, so you're able to come into the room with the well and you don't see any spiders, but you can tell by peering down the um, web-covered tunnel to this, on the south side that um, there's a lot of chittering happening on that end and you wouldn't be surprised if they were going to pour through sometime soon. So you only have, a you know, let's say realistically a minute or so be, before you're probably um, noticed. Of course, you are near the exit, but um, so do you still want to investigate the well? Uh, no. Ah, okay. I'm going to go back to the portrait and look around there, I guess. Um, uh, so the portrait is massive. You could look, it looks like you could take it down yourself. You, you can't carry it out of here yourself. You need another person to help you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to like look behind it and just investigate that room. Uh, well, there's, there's, there's not much else in this room, uh, other than the, the large tapestry on the wall. Um, there is, um, From where you were just a moment ago, you can hear what sounds like chittering as if the um, space you just occupied in the well room has now been occupied by spiders. So you get the feeling that either they noticed you or they just happened to go in just as you left. So it's pretty good that you got out of there. Um, but they might be looking for you down, down this way now. Okay, I'm going to, I guess, go back to the spider or the skeleton room then. And uh, and do you plan on going north on either end or going west? What's your? Uh, I guess the sp the skeletons do not want me to pass, so I'll go north. Well, general question: Are you walking or climbing on the ceiling and walls when you're doing this? I'm climbing. Got it. Like... Okay, so you're just kind of climbing around, being a weird spider person. Uh, and where yeah. are you, where are you going? I guess I, I don't. How tall are the ceilings? Uh, ten feet high. You could like you could conceivably climb over the skeletons if you wanted to. If that's what you were asking. I'm gonna try to yeah climb over to, and like in the corners and see if they don't notice me. Yeah, they they're, they seem to be back to ignoring you again. Um, they're one of the skeletons you saw earlier is now missing a jawbone that it appears to be bedding. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll try to get past them and rejoin my group. So you're able to climb over uh, the the ceiling to them, and they don't really notice you. When you drop and land back on the ground, um, one of the, one of them looks up, but you quickly pass through into the um, room with your friends. Okay. Well, so I so you can do that on the if you move yourself there. No. Um, as he comes down the wall in our room, I was like, "Oh, look who's back!" He <laughs> doesn't. You, you're not weird at all <laughs> in your like semi spider form, but look who we found. And I sort of quickly point at the, the little goblin girl. Oh, what's okay. your name, by the way? What is that? <laughs> I'm Wogwort. 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 Yes, Wogwort. Um, uh, my family are toad shepherds. I live in a bog. You know, she's a little girl, so they say stuff like that. Um, so, do you? Do, were you guys just about to head north? Was the the plan? Yes. Well, well around uh, as uh, as um, nine comes in, I I just look at him and I was like, "Are the did, did you go back to the tapestry? Are the spiders there? Should we should we just run?" The spiders are there. I think we should close the door, but the skeletons do not like the spiders, so that's something. Uh, all right, so um, I'm just going to go up here and try and lock the door. So there isn't a lock on this door, but you can definitely close it. I close it. Hopefully spiders are not that good at opening doors. <laughs> um, all right, so who is leading the party down the next hall? I have the torch, so I assume probably me. Okay. Alrighty, I'll let this walkward go in front of me because I, well, don't really trust it. We just met her. So you enter the room uh, to the north, or you enter the end of the the, the hallway, anyways. Um, this looks like a very important room. There is a large stone slab right in the center. 
And on that slab, there appears to be a um, mummified corpse of some kind. The um, corpse is wearing a very fancy attire. It has white wood armor, a crown, also white, of twisted branches. Green leaves appear to be growing off of the branches. In its arms, which are crossed, each hand is holding a black iron arrow. And just above the corpse, the skeleton, I should say, or the mummified skeleton, there is what appears to be a large pulley system with heavy chains holding in the air a, a, an hourglass filled with sand. On the west wall, there is an iron crank attached to the heavy chain and pulley system. And on the east wall is a locked door. And there is a tunnel on the north side going um, out. Oh, it's like an alternate exit, maybe. Uh, so it's just it's just, it's a hallway leading out. That's all you know. It does appear like there are little dips and alcoves in that hallway that you can see from here, but you can't really see what's going on there without moving forward. It does appear like there's nothing at the end of the hallway. It's just too dark to tell. But um, um, could you tell me again what is held up by the pulley? A large hourglass. Oh, um, can we like made of? Uh, okay, so it's like okay. okay. It's How large. Yeah, it's it's essentially like uh, imagine a chain and pulley system um, mm -hmm. with a crank on the wall, where, right where uh, Reese is standing right now, um, mm -hmm. and on the just above the corpse that's laid out in fancy in a fancy manner, there is a large hourglass with sand in it, with white sand in it, held by a uh, chain attached to the pulley system. Nice. Um, is the kid following the goblin kid? Because I wanted to stay behind her. Uh, yes, the kid is following. Sorry, that's uh, I should have okay. I should have probably done that. There we go. Okay, so I just I just stay next to her. I just don't want to. You know, just want to keep an eye on her. I came this way, she says. She points to the end of the hallway leading north. Can nine see down down the hallway any better without going yes, down? Yes, actually, nine does not have um, the same limitations because nine it can see in the dark now. Um, yes, the hallway uh, leading to the north, where nine is standing, um, is lined with um, small alcoves. There's two on each side: two in the west, two in the two in the east. Um, the alcoves themselves have what appear to be skulls sitting inside of them, like you know, mounted inside of the alcove, and each skull has in its eye sockets uh, beautiful looking gemstones, green gemstones in one. Um, there is three of the alcoves have what appear to be human or maybe elf, depending on what you were looking for, um, looking skulls. But one is unique. It has um, a, a kind of snout protruding out of it and a large, t uh, two large tusks one of which appears to be gold colored. Um, so yeah, so these are again, four alcoves, two on each side. All of them are filled with skulls and um, there are uh, beautiful green gemstones stuffed into the eye sockets with um, uh, some interesting ornamental or, or uh, ritualistic markings carved into the skulls themselves. Um, so you can see all this from where you're standing because you can see in the dark. Mm -hmm. Hey, I found something. <laughs> <laughs> and it does appear like at like the hallway just appears to sort of end, but there are um, uh, the, the the doorway facing you from where you are, or I should say the the where the door should be appears to be um, a, a flat, smooth stone of some kind. Uh, well, while Nine goes into the um, hallway, uh, I get a little closer to the, um, um, well, the... Corpse. A corpse, Skeleton. okay. Oh, see, the, the, the body. Yeah, I mean, he's wearing a <laughs> crown, the, so the you middle. can call him a king. All right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I go close to the to the king in the middle and, 
and sort of um, take a look. He does he look like an an elf? You said. Uh, yes, based on the skull, you can assume there's like high cheekbones. You know, mm. elves like to be fancy. So, yes, I would assume yeah. that he he appears to be an elf. Okay, so I turn to toward Wogwort and I say, "Hey, little one, uh, what were you doing here? Were you looking? You went to this room." Uh, were you, did you get lost? Were you looking for perhaps a treasure? Have you perhaps encountered something precious in these rooms? Uh, so Wogward looks kind of puzzled, like maybe she doesn't understand the question. And she says, no, I, I, I just got lost. And then I, I came out and I thought maybe, maybe somebody lived here because there was just uh, uh, these, these stones were just sort of, stacked in a way that i thought maybe people did it themselves so i went over into this mound and then i heard this the stones fall behind me and the door closed in and i was trapped so so i came in this room and there was, this, was just this old body here and it, it was super freaky so i kept looking and then i found some food in this barrel but i was too scared to 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 explore more so i hid in the barrel but then i couldn't get out and you know just run on sentence like that yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I I tried to like jump into conversation. It's like, um, okay, okay, okay. So where you came from, it collapsed. So there's no way out this way. I, I, all I know is I, 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 I just walked in and then I heard the stones that were stacked fall behind me and and I and I started to run because I thought maybe maybe they were gonna fall on me, but instead the this 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 door behind just just fell down. Like, and she points down the hallway to to the flat smooth stone surface mm. at the end of the door all right i uh in case reese and nine did not hear this i i called them out and i'm like um hey so uh that 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 um it's where nine is right uh, yeah. yeah i think we got the information though okay. but yeah, yeah. you could just say you conveyed it to us yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I i let you know everything she said with a uh, uh increasingly alarmed tone <laughs> and i said well um I start looking at the pulleys and the cranks on the walls. I'm like, well, maybe we should start figuring out how to get out of here. Uh, a treasure for dead adventurers is not a good treasure. I, I don't there's disagree. A of, Sorry. There's a ton of treasure right here. Um, <laughs> Renine is going to start pointing to things and putting skulls in his backpack. Yeah, no, so so um, it looks like, Nine, you are focused on this hallway um do you investigate one of the skulls or what what is your like do you take yeah, a better gonna, look what do you do I, I think it's might be a bad idea to take the gems out so i'm gonna try to take the entire skull but, and see how that goes okay so you start, so you pick up which of the which skull do you pick up first and describe to me um how you do that i'm going to uh pick up the first uh skull to the right on the in the hallway with the green uh gems, gems for eyes yeah and i noticed that the writing uh, on it so i yeah they appear they appear right. ornamental of a sort um uh like like you know they were added after the fact and before the skulls were placed here um so you just pick up the skull and take it out of the alcove yeah, I'm going to try to pick up a whole skull and put it in my bag Got and see it. how that goes. So as you lift up the skull, you make out what looks like a thin um, silver wire attached to the, to the inside bottom of the skull. <laughs> and um, because you just kind of picked it up and took it without cautiously looking underneath, for example, um, the, the wire breaks as you pull it. And um, hold, you're still holding the skull, to be clear, but... Um, almost immediately you feel the ground shake around you, just you, and um, you need to make a deck save to see whether or not you get crushed by the collapsing. Now you are near the entrance, which is good. Uh, at least the entrance of the hallway. So uh, make a deck save. Alright, so um, you are crushed and it does a significant amount of damage. Hooray. But it does, uh, your armor will help. Maybe. Oh, dear. So, um, how much strength did you have left? <laughs> Nine. Um, right. So, three armor, yeah. So, um, 
Right. So it does 12 damage minus your armor, which is is nine. And then you have nine strength left. So you actually, this kills you outright. <laughs> it does. Okay. So the, the, it, the ceiling collapses and you are smushed and dead. I, I would normally say, you know, if you had hit one, I would have made you do some kind of um, critical damage. No, that's, save, but, that's fair. Yeah, but no. It's, so it completely crushes you. Um, now the question is, uh, whether or not you are crushed so much that the skull is also crushed um, because maybe it is recoverable. So I'm just going to um, see how much it crushed you real quick. Ah, okay. So um, the ceiling collapses, it kills you and I'm going to, can I mark you as dead? There's a way to do that. There we go. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there it is. Um, and uh uh, one of the gemstones bounces out and lands at the feet of um, Wagrit, who screams. I wouldn't touch that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. So, so it appears our comrade has uh, been defenestrated from his uh, life and limb. And I, so I, I am going to as the experienced adventurer here, uh, recommend that we need to, perhaps this is, uh, let us take this, our uh, Wogwort. Uh, I, I think it's time we get you out of here. Uh, we know of an alternate exodus the way that we entered, and I th though there may be spiders, we will make our way and at most try to keep you safe. Aww. Uh, do you take I anything? I agree with that. Uh, do, do you guys leave um, nine where he fell? Yeah, he's mostly crushed, anyways. Um, I mean, he already had kind of um, put us in a bad situation before. I guess. Well, yeah, in gems. fact, he screwed you up on the jewels. Then he took the spider offering. Then he left. Yeah. Overall, I mean, <laughs> I think you're I mean, right. So you're you're not gonna. Yeah. Um, take the crown or the arrows or anything from this uh, this place seems very dangerous <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think that also, we, we might we might get a reward yeah. for rescuing this goblin right. you know? yeah okay she, she did say that uh the family would you know be thankful and at this point even getting a warm meal would feel um <laughs> Like yeah, I was thinking like a bag of potatoes or something. <laughs> yeah, well, they're totally anything they're of farmers. sustenance or what are they? What, what do they call them? Yeah, did I say toad farmer? I think that's what they're called. Um, no. Toad shepherds. We... Toad shepherds. Yeah. So, um, you're are you gonna try to leave the way you came? Yeah, we're gonna try uh, to go back out through here. I think. Yeah, I think that is the the, the way out north, though more direct. It's now doubly blocked. It's double. Yeah, it I mean, is you could blocked. try to hack this. You could try to like pick this lock. Maybe you have high decks. Yeah, let me try to pick this lock and see if sure. there's not yeah. more horrors in the back. I do that. Okay, yeah. So make a deck save to see whether or not your meager equipment. Sorry, can... sorry. I I I I did the wrong one. Apologies. I, oh, strength. I, Got I, it. I... So well, first, yeah. hold on. Because you don't have a lock pick set, I do. Yeah. Because you're an outlaw, I assume that you know how to do this. Obviously, but you probably mm -hmm. use your dagger. So if you're uh, right or the hook, yeah, or, or the, I think a dagger would be easier than a grappling hook. I don't know to pick a yeah. lock. I, as someone, <laughs> I, I was a locksmith in a previous life, so I would say I, I think the dagger is probably easier. Um, okay. Uh, so the danger here, the reason you would be making the actual strength save is first, it's, it's a matter of how much time there is, and then second, um, you don't want to break your dagger. So go ahead, make a make a deck save to see whether or not you're able to successfully pick this lock. And no, no, nope. you're, you're, Ooh, you're a, yeah, you, yeah. So here's what's going to happen. The door unlocks, but the dagger is jammed inside of it. You're an out, you're an outlaw. So I, I would have a hard time believing that you wouldn't be able to at least get through this door. Um, so the door unlocks, but against your own choice, it actually opens against you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you can see the, the worms from earlier. Ah, hearing Lord. through um and this time they are um much more interested in something than they were before and, and it's likely the corpse of your dead friend but um 
uh, you know that they are they love to eat dead things. So they they time to go. They, time to go, everyone. Run south. You. So yeah, the, the quite, do you do you uh -huh. all run away? Is that what happens? No, I I say one second. If they all go toward ninth corpse, we can go oh, through their room. Yeah, so we should let's run just south get out of the way. Yeah, let's get yeah. out of their way. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they they, Come on, they so yeah they they uh, begin to enter the room. Um, all right. And and, and right. as you look back, you see that there are all four of them have actually now entered this room, and are right. feasting on his here. I see. I see. Um, so as you pass through here, um, you notice that there are uh, at least two urns left intact. The remainder of all are broken and destroyed on the ground. Um, one of the urns is transparent and full of uh, some kind of liquid jelly, and inside of it is what appears to be a brain the other Ew. the other urn is um more box shaped but um not you can't see through it's uh, opaque so you can't see through it this place is terrible kira we never i i mean we'll never follow nines again because he's dead oh we should not go this way because that's where the spiders are we should go south <laughs> it, uh, yes uh, unless there is like uh, another uh like way north but it doesn't seem do you, to so, be so no so. so are you saying that you you investigate to see if there's anything along the walls or anything on the north side oh yeah we probably should to see okay. if there's a way we can cut through oh yeah, how interesting absolutely. that you did that because there is in fact a um, false wall standing just where you are um kira and um oh. you push against this stone that um is slightly discolored with what appears to be like liquid damage and it actually pushes aside and it's actually a door and you're able to push through um, sweet and oh you you ignored I... the jelly brain right oh yeah okay. yeah no thank you <laughs> yeah it's just like i don't i don't see any and um so to it, so, so hold on a second before you uh, escape from here so as i mentioned earlier when nine was still alive um there the i actually need to do that because i didn't there we go um spiders actually that he triggered earlier um actually this one's dead <laughs> there's only oh there was only two of them um are yeah, both we killed one you did kill one right yeah. um so they are still standing here and they appear to be um angry so uh can you all make a deck save and i'll also make one for our little friend here Yes. Yeah. Let me open my sheet. My goodness. I rolled a six. My dex is eight. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, um, Wagwort failed. Um, goodness. So I failed too. So Wagwort goes last, but it it does look like um, Reese. You get to go. So, uh, what do you do? I'm gonna shoot him. <laughs> Which one? I'm gonna shoot the one that's directly in front of me. Okay. Got it. Go ahead. Seven. Wow. Um, great. I'll make a strength save on that. Reese will yell at them. I have done far too yeah. much today to uh, deal with you and your chittering. The the <laughs> um, arrow strikes through the head of the spider just like before. You got. I guess you got kind of good at this, and it immediately dies. Um, the oopsie. There we go. The um, other one proceeds to move forward and attacks you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, here, I'll just. I have armor two and hit protection of six. All right. So, um, in this case, if you want to do this, you're, you know, I'll just make it. I'll make it fast for you. Um, Reese. Oh yeah! Wow, that's really good impressive all right so you just go down to one just down to one hp but you're you're fine you dodge out of the way of its attack um scraping against the wall but otherwise unharmed um mm -hmm. uh, the spider follows and is somewhat distracted by what you can you yeah I'll, I'll move you up a little bit um it's somewhat distracted uh by you leaving an opening now for um the uh what were to run through if that was your plan um, yes all right, so now it's back to them. Da, 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 and what about um, you, Kira? Okay, so I push Wogworth. I literally screamed at her, run, kid, we'll follow. And then 
I take out my grappling hook and uh, <laughs> like uh, like which is mounted on a rope, as I mentioned yeah. earlier, and like try to grab the spider that is attacking breeze and literally either shred it or at least like hook it and cool. toss it yeah, behind, that sounds great. behind us. Yeah, and so we can try to, you're throwing you know, this or are you stabbing the spider and then th like what, what I guess you know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go up to it because I don't. Well, I'm. I'm done missing yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and so, well, I, I guess just my question grab was, it. Are you? Yeah. You're. You're grabbing it with the grappling hook and then swinging it somewhere, right? Is that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Pretty much behind us, so that we can run out. So in this case, this is a hmm. non-combat move. I'm actually gonna have it make a strength save to see whether or not um, it can. It's the one that's more in danger here. So it's gonna do a strength save to see whether or not your. Um, uh, uh, let's call it uh this works your action it's like a grapple. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean it is it's basically like you're trying to just get it the hell out of here and it's resisting you right so um and but but i'm i'm gonna say that you just stab it with a grappling hook it doesn't really have any it can't there's not much it can do about that so um okay so what happens so, here yeah. is i'm gonna i'm still gonna have damage happen to it though we, we agreed it was 1d6 earlier um yep. so Cool. So it uh, it does take damage, um, but the grappling hook experiment doesn't work out the way that you wanted it to, um, and it is able to kind of like dodge and it hisses. But before it can react, it's now Reese's turn again. I'm gonna just, uh, I want to shoot it, but I'm way too I'm you're, I don't you're too I'm close. Just, yeah, you're, you you'd have to. Be so I'm gonna there. move move and shoot. So if you it, yeah it, so if. Um, is there attack of opportunity? No, there's not. You can you can move away from it. I would say if your plan is um, just to use your crossbow, uh, you, yeah. you can move away from it because, especially because it was being distracted. So, like, this is all happening. It all happened simultaneously, but because there was they because um, Kira yeah, Kira failed it. the first. Well, you also failed the first. It, that it actually isn't happening at the same time. But now, starting now, before you do this, um, Kira, what is your action after what you just did? Well, um, oh, uh, I think I'm still going to try to... You're going to go for it uh, again? <laughs> you gonna you try to grapple it again? Uh, I mean, I don't have a dagger. I guess I, ha I just have... I had a hook. And you can just you said, stab it again. Yeah, yeah. no, you, you can. You yeah, can just I would try probably to try to stab it. Stab okay. stab you, you have a lit torch, too, which is a good weapon. Very true. Very true. Um, so... So okay, well, she did. As I, I don't hear think she lit from the torch. dead. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Well, you can hit it without the lit torch. torch. No, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to uh, stab it again with a grappling hook. So, um, as uh, so, so you this happens all simultaneously. So first, Reese moves out of the way and tries to fire. Go ahead. Okay. Oh well, I mean that's sufficient. Yeah, um, I guess none of it mattered. But um, uh, let me do this okay. makes a string Reese, save I now and it understand fails. why yeah i'm i now understand why kira looks at you as a father figure yeah <laughs> yeah yes. did i kill the other spider too yes you did you've killed yeah. you've killed three spiders so far with your crossbow um yes so so just to be clear it it, it, it so reese did five damage it, uh, mm -hmm. The spider had to make a strength save, and it failed that strength save. So um, it got a 13. So it is dead. Um, so those spiders are dead. Uh, you can now safely escape. So you're not going to go try to get the tapestry or anything, make that kid work? Nah. <laughs> I mean, Kira, if you really want to... It, but it seemed like a gif of a tapestry, so I'm a little concerned it's enchanted <laughs> and something bad will happen if we pull it down from the wall. Enchanted and expensive. Um, I like I like that the ghost of nine is following you guys around. That's good. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right, so you guys just leave. That's it. Yes, you just leave. You're not. Okay. You, leave. <laughs> you know what? I am just not. Uh, my life like a kid. is. Yeah. <laughs> I will try to sell my fake jewels. We still have a few of those. Not wow. everybody's an expert. Yeah, we'll all right. Money that no, way. that's great. Okay, so you all leave. We, um, we we also just need a new guy to give us jobs because clearly nine is like <laughs> no good. <laughs> so, However, I mean, in his defense, he's a cook. Like he's he is a cook. Why were we hired? Why were we listening to a cook? Well, he had. <laughs> that is an excellent question <laughs> for the future. <laughs> sneaky guy with intel. 
Um, all right, so you guys got none of the treasure, but um, you did survive, which is pretty good. Uh, when you do take Wagrit back to her home, and her parents, as she said, were in fact toad shepherds, and as a reward, they give you a toad steed. Like I guess it's a it's a toad yes. ride. Uh, is it my yes. understanding? Um, yes. Whew. Great. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um and and that's it <laughs> you guys that that's the whole dungeon um uh so normally i would say you know <laughs> normally i would say well so as you're as you know as you were leaving with your toad steep you run into <laughs> and then i would come up with some other thing but since this is a one stop we don't need to do that um all right i'm gonna I just want to say that the the death of of nine was very much like uh, any any movies in which you know you go into an, any sort of a cursed tomb and there is the one guy that just grabs the thing does can't stop yeah, poking stuff he shows you why it's dangerous I mean to yeah. be fair like I tried to say like okay how do you pick yep. it up because you tried yeah well, <laughs> I, I will say one criticism I have of this particular dungeon is that. In the actual text, it says there's a wire attached. It doesn't say if they pick up carefully. It just kind of implies. But how can you pick up something carefully that has a wire underneath? Like, I don't know how you would figure that out. Um, so that was, to me, a little bit like, oh, I feel like I ran it as written and maybe I shouldn't have. And then the second thing is it does say, you know, if you have someone there who has any knowledge of um, funerary customs, they would know that this was like the attendees or the retainers of the person buried in that chamber and but none of you really had that you were outlaws and a cook so i was like i'm not even going to mention that because you have no okay. background go ahead well yeah. i was also thinking like uh the i shouldn't take out the eyes because they obviously have some right. kind of magical right. spell on them right right so maybe no if the eyes the were skull... normal the eyes were oh, no. just <laughs> normal yeah they would have just done... and the the tusk was just gold yeah it's funny <laughs> no you had the right idea but yeah um, no, it was good to show the danger. You're right. You're right, though. He's the guy who dies in Indiana Jones to show you that it's a dangerous place. Exactly. Right? That just went yeah. through my mind, and I actually think it's great because we saw that characters can die, and that's fine. They, yeah. Well, <laughs> and he got spider powers, which was cool. Yeah, that was cool. Although, yeah, it, his yeah, his one hit protection did not help me. No surprise there. No, that was not great. Um, so, what, what are the, the max stats? Are twenty? Uh, for ability scores, uh, it's 18. For HP, there really isn't one. Um, hit protection generally just says... Well, for one thing, you recover it immediately. So even if you did lose hit protection, like got to zero HP, um, after a few minutes of safety or a drink of water or whatever, you, you get all your HP back. Um, so it's not... It's not exactly health because it, it it auto recovers. You know, it's like it's like old school HD when you used to reroll it every day when you wake up or whatever. But this is it happens frequently. Um, your strength was also just really low, so you just had really low stats and you failed your deck save. And in that case, I wouldn't have even let hit protection matter. It only all yeah. only armor and strength mattered there because obviously a helmet would save you if you had rocks fall on you, but um, your strength was low enough that. Uh, even if you had been covered in rocks, I think you would. Yeah, you were dead. But, but you I'm, were, sh I'm I'm shocked how well Reese did, considering how low Reese's stats are. Yeah, yeah. Reese was a machine, like so amazing. But I will say that I really love that uh, nine in his death was incredibly useful to distract the oh, yeah. So, um, are you guys at all interested in seeing what the dungeon looks like? Yeah, sure. totally. Sure. I think I have I have this. In it's in Haunted Almanac, right? Yes, yes, it is. It is. I have looked at it, but I don't. Rem I have, like, as you know, I have horrendous short-term memory, so well, that's I great. just was like, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> it, it works really well because it's like I own game books, but then I don't remember what the dungeon is at all. So I will let me turn off the yeah. the fog of war. Yeah, I feel like the oh, bad yeah. stats made us play more realistically. Oh, yeah, that, that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm curious. In general, I mean, after you show the dungeon, I'm curious a little bit. Uh, I know we're not going to do that because this is one shot. Um, of what advancement looks like in the game? Yeah, that's one oh, I'm I happy. It, yeah. Um, sure, sure. Oh, we did get all of the rooms, so that's you good. did yeah. get all the rooms. Um, you even found the secret room, um, the secret false wall. There's a little. I actually have some. I told Nate some of what he has written down doesn't actually match the map. Um, 
and um, it's the PDF is different than the web version of this, so there's a little caution there. There's like some stuff that's just wrong, um, but it's also you know I mean I think it's a really easy to run dungeon personally, but it's only my second time running it. So can you guys you guys can see it all right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, there is an additional skeleton hanging in one of the sacks in that. Uh, I kind of figured it room. was either a person but, or a skeleton. Yeah, in there. Um, and if you do save him, then they tell you there's like, apparently the well um, biological stuff doesn't burn off, so you could put your arm in there, but the clothes mm. and everything else would burn off. And um, and then if you had turned the sand in the, in the tomb here, the elf king would have risen from the grave, basically, as a ghost and fights you. But hey, but there's some really cool... Um, uh, treasure and stuff here you guys just didn't get. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird. No, it's good. It's what, good. What, happened, hmm? what would have happened with the tapestry? It's just magical. It's worth a lot of money. Um, <laughs> that's it. And, that's fair. And it has um, it has it can hint to like entrances to fairyland, the fairy realm. Um, but no, mm. it's worth like two fifty or something. I, I must have put it. Oof. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it was just difficult to carry out. Yeah, you have to have two people. Uh, Carrying it out, which puts their protection at zero, is what I decided for. And what about the the room with the actual elf king? Like, was was there just mortal danger? I mean, besides you know carving you, out the gems. If you gemstones. move the crank, oh, you mm. mean the retainer's room, the hallway? Well, so ha well, any of that yeah. part, yeah. Um, yeah. So the, they're just the retainers. If you had snipped the wire or or whatever, figured a way just to get the gems and leave them alone, in theory, it doesn't collapse on you um the the actual elf king's room has um uh a crank if you turn it the sand the sand turns over and it takes about 10 minutes you can fight the elf king as a ghost and if you defeat him you get his sword um you i think no matter what you can rob his corpse though and take his armor and his arrows and the arrows you know are like they kill dragons or something um and the nice. and the, the crown is Actually, I don't think the crown does anything. I can't remember what the crown does, but um, yeah. So I mean, you guys, ex you guys explored it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say that I think it's a good dungeon. It's very, it's quick. It's uh, you know, there are some interesting elements. I love the skeletons and uh, like uh, it, the, like diverse um, uh, op like antagonists. So. It's it's pretty it was it's pretty interesting yeah I liked it the the crown by the way lets you communicate telepathically with woodland creatures it's actually really cool, Ooh. Like, um, yeah, cool. and also the skeleton's dice uh, you whisper a number and that's the that's what they land on which I thought was really cute there's really good the treasure here is really good um, the the only thing I'll say about the skeletons is so the way it describes them is that they're just really bored because they've been like bound to this place, but they're not like very good at guarding anymore. They just don't care. They half-heartedly ask intruders to leave and they say, okay, let's get out of here. It's getting late, but they don't really like do anything. So I feel like giving them more. I mean, I guess I could have, but giving them more to kind of want from the situation may have helped me. Maybe I'll next time I run this, I'll think of something they actually want, but in general, they were quite fun. Um, yeah, anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank so, you. All. Just, yeah, your questions, yes. Oh, just, just a question about advancements. If you oh, could of just course. like, yeah. uh, so we, I'll, let me know I'll give you an work. example from this, right? Um, sure. so, uh, let's say nine had survived, and yeah, he received this ability, which honestly, that's all diegetic his ability there to, to become a spider person or whatever, and maybe try to avoid, um, when I ran this previously, um, we actually role played the two people that were going through the dungeon. They both got bit. We role played them going out into the world and finding victims and bringing them back, um, oh. which was quite interesting. And um, also looking for a cure. So, like, that led to a lot of stuff. But in terms of Karen itself, when you're talking about um, foreground growth and, and, and that kind of advancement, um, I would say the relationship between um, the players as outlaws and their relative skills as outlaws would have been approved. So for example, had you, had you maybe not broken that dagger had, had, that, as you opened the door, had you succeeded, mm -hmm. I would have said, well, this is like a good learning experience. You can now use that dagger as a full on lock pick and you'll never break it. So I made that is an example of like, I would have improved your character's skill 
not necessarily like making it so you didn't have to roll that maybe if you got really good but now i would say you can now use daggers as lock picks and there's no risk to the dagger i might say that or i might say um if one of you was bit by one of the spiders pretty seriously which nobody really was other than nine who you know died <laughs> um if one of you had been bit by one of the spiders i might say like um the the wound hardens over time and that leg has um not worked the same since but now whenever you are in the forest you can hear the rhythmic um patterns of larger intelligent spiders as they communicate you can't totally make out what they're saying but you can tell when they're nearby and if there's a threat you know i might add on to that so that's the kind of stuff i would i would kind of lean on we only played for an hour or so so it's not like there was that much to work with but um definitely like injuries and stuff lead to that sort of thing oh, okay okay uh but i mean it was it was good really thank you like i enjoyed this and i have a much clearer idea now especially on how to um yeah bring along play if i wanted to 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 run some scenarios with karen and and especially like uh, how to uh, rule interactions that that was something that i wanted to see so thank you yeah that. yeah no i i <laughs> sorry my mic fell off my head halfway through i was it really started to distract me because i was like oh, it keeps falling off my head and so i i kept that's why i kept getting uh confused because i was like i kept trying to fix it while muting myself so uh, next time i'll be next time i do this i'll be more ready for this kind of stuff um it's the first time i've ever recorded an actual play um yeah if you have any no other comments we can kind of end it there yeah sure thank, thank you. you thank you okay